students all of you know that the mechanism of respiration involves four steps first is breathing second is external respiration and in this video we are we are going to study the third step that is internal respiration internal respiration that is the transport of gases from alveoli to the blood and from blood into the tissues so this transport of o2 involves two main components that is blood and plasma blood and plasma these are the two main components which are useful for transport of o2 and transport of co2 so the first is transport of o2 transport of o2 this transport of o2 takes place by plasma and blood in which 3% of o2 is transported by plasma while in dissolved state while as 97% of o2 is transported by blood and the blood contains hemoglobin which acts as a respiratory pigment so this hemoglobin contains four iron molecules and these four iron molecules has an affinity to combine with oxygen to forms oxyhemoglobin and hence this hemoglobin acts as a respiratory pigment so this blood which contains hemoglobin combines with oxygen to forms oxyhemoglobin and all of this formation of oxyhemoglobin related with partial pressure of o2 partial pressure of co2 temperature and h plus concentration so these are the four factors which are essential to formation of oxyhemoglobin and if the condition is favorable oxyhemoglobin formation takes place so in the alveoli it takes place in alveoli as this as alveoli contains high partial pressure of o2 low partial pressure of co2 less temperature or low temperature and less plus concentration all these factors are suitable or favorable for formation of oxyhemoglobin and each blood contains hemoglobin blood contains hemoglobin each hemoglobin contains four molecules of iron and each iron molecule can pick up one oxygen molecule and hence the reaction which is carried out in alveoli is hb plus o2 that is 4 o2 four molecules of oxygen which are picked up by four fe ions and hence it forms hb o2 that is oxyhemoglobin this oxyhemoglobin forms as the partial pressure of o2 in alveoli is higher and partial pressure of co2 in alveoli is low and in this condition or it is favorable condition for formation of oxyhemoglobin so this oxyhemoglobin transported from alveoli into the blood and from blood into the tissue and when it enters into the tissue this oxyhemoglobin as it is unstable it again dissociates that is hb 4o2 that is oxyhemoglobin it dissociates to forms hb plus 4o2 or o2 so this partial pressure of o2 and relationship between the relationship between this partial pressure of o2 and oxygen saturation of hemoglobin is called oxygen dissociation curve so this oxygen dissociation curve is also called as sigmoid curve this sigmoid curve is formed or it is a relationship between ppo2 and oxygen saturation hb this oxygen saturation is not 100% or 100% 
ऑक्सीमोग्लोबिन फॉर्मेशन और ऑक्सीजन सेचुरेशन इज वेरी रेयर द नाइंटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज कंबाइंड विथ हिमोग्लोबिन एंड रिमेनिंग इज कैनॉट फॉर्म ऑक्सीमोग्लोबिन बिकॉज द कंडीशन इज नॉट फेवरेबल दैट इज वेन दिस ऑक्सीमोग्लोबिन एंटर्स इन टू द टिश्यू द कंडीशन इज रिवर्स दैट इज पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन टिश्यू इज लो while as the partial pressure of co2 in tissue is higher higher temperature and higher h plus concentration causes or it cannot hold large amount of oxygen ions with hemoglobin and hence it decreases oxygen carrying capacity or oxygen holding capacity of hemoglobin as a result the oxyhemoglobin dissociates and it forms hb plus 4o2 this transport of o2 takes place in presence of plasma and blood only 3% of o2 is transported by plasma while remaining 97% of o2 is transported by blood that is formation of oxyhemoglobin so in this transport of o transport of o2 formation of oxyhemoglobin is a important term and this hemoglobin oxyhemoglobin formation depends on four important factors that is partial pressure of o2 partial pressure of co2 temperature and h plus ion concentration so in this transport of o2 there are three important terms that is oxygen dissociation curve or sigmoid curve second is bohr effect and halden effect we are going to discuss the transport of co2 the co2 is readily soluble in water and it can be transported by three different forms transport of co2 takes place by plasma first it takes place by plasma nearly about 7% of co2 is transported by plasma in dissolved state while by bicarbonate ions percent of carbon dioxide it transported by bicarbonate ions and remaining that is 23% of co2 is transported by red blood cells nearly about 23% of co2 is transported by red blood cells so these are the three different forms which helps to transport of co2 the co2 which is present into the tissue cells so suppose these are the tissue cells and this is the blood plasma here the blood plasma that is the red blood cells and the plasma so the transport of co2 takes place from tissue cells into the blood as the co2 is soluble in water it is transported from tissue that is the interstitial fluid which contains co2 this co2 is enters into the first into the blood plasma and then into the blood so what happens this co2 when enters into the plasma it readily combines with water and it forms h2co3 that is carbonic acid this carbonic acid is formed into the plasma so the transport of co2 that is 7% of co2 is transported by plasma so the co2 combines with water and forms carbonic acid as it is unstable it again dissociates into co2 and water that is the reversible reaction takes place into the plasma and the 70% of co2 is transported by bicarbonate ions and 23% by red blood cells so this 70% of co2 which enters into the blood then it combines with again it combines with water and forms carbonic acid that is h2co3 in red blood cells suppose these are the red blood cells the red blood cells that is the rbc rbc releases the enzyme carbonic anhydrase this carbonic anhydrase forms h2co3 that is can able to form carbonic acid 
this carbonic acid is formed into the plasma also but the rate of formation of carbonic acid is more in rbc as the rbc forms enzymes carbonic anhydrase this carbonic anhydrase formed only in rbc and hence the carbonic acid formation is higher in rbc than plasma so this carbonic acid is again unstable and it dissociates into the rbc it is broken down into h2 hco3 ions and h plus ions as there is increase into the hco3 ions there is ionic balance is unstable or it for maintaining maintain this ionic balance this ion concentration which is increased into the rbc the cl ions which are present into the plasma shifted into the rbc or diffuses into the rbc this chloride ions which diffuses into the rbc is called as chloride shift mechanism it is called as chloride shift and the formation of hco3 and h plus ion causes ionic imbalance and for to maintain this ionic balance chloride ions shifted into the rbc this ionic ionic imbalance causes due to the presence of carbonic anhydrase which is higher in rbc as rbc contains or secretes this carbonic anhydrase so this h2co3 then again dissociates into co2 and water and the remaining carbonic acid that is large amount of carbonic acid is formed and the remaining carbonic acid which diffuses into hco3 ions plus h plus ions and this hco3 which are formed in large amount again combines with some bicarbonate ions which are present into the plasma so large amount of hco3 or co2 which is transported by bicarbonate ions and here the reaction again takes place with sodium ions and potassium ions so this hco3 which is released into this plasma again combines with na to forms nahco3 and some ions of bicarbonate ions combines with potassium to forms khco3 so the 70% of bicarbonate ions which helps to transport this co2 from tissue cells into the rbc and plasma so this co2 transport which takes place in presence of plasma and red blood cells that is rbc in this in this mechanism main important process that is the co2 which is soluble in water and it forms carbonic acid so formation of this carbonic acid takes place in presence of enzyme carbonic anhydrase which is released by rbc this h h2co3 dissociates into hco3 and h plus ions due to which it causes ionic imbalance and for to maintain this ionic balance chloride moves in diffuses into the rbc that is called as chloride shift and the remaining hco3 ions which combines with bicarbonate ions present into the plasma and two reactions are takes place here in presence of carbonic anhydrase again here it takes place in presence of carbonic anhydrase that is just co3 combines with sodium ions same that co3 combines with potassium ions to form nhco3 and khco3 and the large amount of co2 from tissue cells enters or released into the blood and from this blood again it enters into the alveoli so this h plus ion and h co co3 ions which combines with bicarbonate ions some h plus ions which are released into the plasma increases ph of blood and due to it this h plus ions again some h plus ions combines with hemoglobin to forms hhb that is a reduced hb then at the alveolar level, level the partial pressure of co2 is low and in response to this partial pressure 
the H plus ions which are present into the RBC again combines with HCO3 minus to forms H2CO3 and this carbonic acid is formed in presence of enzyme carbonic anhydrase and this carbonic acid again dissociates this H2CO3 again dissociates to forms H2O and CO2 which is released into the alveolus. So this process takes place in between tissue cells and RBC and from this RBC and plasma the CO2 is transported into the alveoli. So the transport of CO2 by plasma and bicarbonate ions and last that is the red blood cells that is the remaining CO2 which is 23 percent that is 23 percent of CO2 is transported by red blood cells. The amino group which is present into the blood cells combines with oxygen to form carbamino hemoglobin hemoglobin and as this carbamino hemoglobin is also unstable it can broken down into Hb plus CO2 and this CO2 is again released into the alveolus. So the transport of CO2 23% transport of CO2 by red blood cells. The red blood cells which contains hemoglobin and the hemoglobin contains this amino group which combines with hemoglobin to form carbamino hemoglobin and it again dissociates into Hb plus and CO2. So this transport of CO2 is completed here in the three parts that is 7% by plasma, 70% that is higher percentage about by bicarbonate ions and 23% by red blood cells. And here we completed the transport of CO2, transport of O2 and transport of CO2 which involves into this internal respiration. These two steps are important in this internal respiration. And in next part we, we will discuss about the oxygen dissociation curve, Halden effect and Bohr effect. As the CO2 concentration or PPCO2 is more in the tissue cells, the oxygen dissociation curve takes place.